Hey boys, how are we all doing today? Hope you guys enjoyed watching us balance Nick's Pistons and his uh, Camp Dog Starlet. Um, so we're going to jump straight into it today. We took the Starlet for a drive the other day, uh, ran it up on around 22 psi, adjusted the air fuels a little bit, got it driving pretty good. Oh, baby! Um, when we actually got back to the workshop and we pulled up literally in the doorway here, we finished the video off um, and you could hear a slight sort of funny noise. Um, usually early signs of rod knock with these is at idle you can hear a slight ticking noise but usually you go and crack the throttle and you can hear you know a sort of noise. This is something a little bit different, something's going on here. Now I wasn't going to bullshit you guys and just put this on the dyno and go happy days, it's all really good. Um, but instead I need to start dismantling this now and see what's going on here. I'll just start it up so you guys can have a listen. Now I know forged pistons are renowned to have a little bit of noise when they're cold. That's not the problem here. It wasn't until we got back from the test run of about half an hour of driving I could hear, just hear this noise. So right now it sounds all good. Now I can just hear that, but on the camera it seems to come out a lot louder. So first things first, the sump's leaking. We sort of rushed putting the sump back on just so we could get the glue on there, get it drying while we were putting all the top end back together. And it's got a bit of a leak. So first step now, we've got to pull the sump back off. Um, and yeah, we'll start pulling the rod bearing, the rod caps off and see if there's any damage there. Yep, so we've got a bit of oil dripping off that V-band there. And yeah, there'll be a section there in the sump where it, um, it isn't sealing properly. Something's leaking at the front there as well. So yeah, we've got to take the sump off anyway and have a look in there. Now the current combo that's in this car, we've been driving it around for at least 10,000 k's and hasn't missed a beat. Since putting it back together, the only thing that we've changed, we've put the oversized piston in there and bored it out. And I'm thinking maybe there's sections lower in the bore that it's a little bit tighter. Because when we check the engine after hearing the ticking noise, I could feel the engine oil dipstick was very hot. So I think there might have been a bit of extra friction there. Um, so somewhere in that second cylinder, the piston's a bit tight on the bore, creating a lot of extra heat. Um, I'm sure once engine oil gets to a certain temperature, all the properties in it just get destroyed and it doesn't do its job anymore. So maybe that's happened, um, and yeah, we've 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 done a rod uh, and we've done a rod bearing or something like that. Bit of an oil sample here. We'll see if we've got any metal in there. Now the assembly lube that I used for this engine was um, black. So I'll, let till that, I'll wait till that settles and then we'll check it again. So we've just pulled the sump off and there's definitely um, metallic residue in there. But we just cleaned that pickup and I've got no idea what the hell that is. So whatever that crap is has obviously blocked the pickup and caused us to flog the bearings out. It's like mushy. Oh well. I'll start pulling these caps off and we'll have a look. All right, the next, the next scary thing I've spotted here, look at the color of the crank in between number two rod. And it's actually warm to the touch as well. And this one as well, number three. So I'd say what's happened here is if that pickup's been blocked, which we did clean it before we put the sump back on before, we've been starving the entire engine out of oil. Um, so there's a good chance these bearings are gonna be flogged out. Nick and I are having a quick discussion and we think that the only way this could have happened is there's some NASA space shit going on and the silicon must have like melted out of the gudgeon pins or something because there was that much crap in the bottom of the pickup. What a surprise. Eh? Where, no, where else could it have come from? <laughs> That's it. We don't know. That's it. Like, Where else does jelly come out of an engine? We don't know. So anyway, we probably could put a bearing in uh, that number three journal and get it going again, but Camp Dog needs to make 400 horsepower. So the whole lot's coming apart again and we're gonna check the gudgeon pins and make sure the silicon's still in there. Yeah, 
Well, we've got the head off, and so far, that number two cylinder's looking all right. Ready? Yep. Yep, it's out. Yeah, Matt, that's our problem, by the way. Yeah, all the silicon's, like, it's coming It's gone out. soft. Yeah. Who would have thought? Gudgeon, gudgeon glue, who would have thought? Oh, well. <laughs> all right, what's the verdict? The silicon's just gone to, like, jelly. It's just falling apart. And the little metal piece just popped straight out. Wouldn't want that coming out while the engine's going. Oh, wow, look at that. It is just mush, isn't it? And this is an all rated silicon. I've used this for heaps of stuff before. Sump gaskets and all sorts of stuff, and it's been fine. Well, just not, just not it's as not gudgeon glue. Yeah, I guess it's just not gudgeon bearing rated, is it? No. Well, I'm pretty keen to get this number two piston out and see if there's any marks on the bores. Yeah, well, we'll get them out. It takes a few seconds. Yeah, all right, so it's a little bit tighter down the bottom of the bore. Look at the front side here. It's pretty shiny on the bore. Can you see on the wall? Yeah. Is it on? You just put number one out. The silicon's like vaporized. <laughs> oh, there it goes. What do we do? What do we do?